Hey guys, it's Jake from Phonix Tutorials here today, and I'm going to be showing you how to get your project from Final Cut Pro and bring it into Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve After Effects. Um, and basically, we're going to be doing just for this particular uh, situation, Final Cut Pro to Premiere, um, and that's where we'll be stopping. But we will be using uh, DaVinci Resolve, the free version, the light version, as the intermediary step between the two of them. Now, DaVinci Resolve Lite is completely free. Uh, you can also use the pro version of DaVinci Resolve, but you will need that piece of software. Now, a lot of tutorials I've seen have got you to use expensive paid software. This way is actually equally easy, um, and it's free. And also, if you have a Blackmagic uh, production camera, or cinema camera, or so, or so mini, any of their cameras, you also have a, a full version of DaVinci Resolve you can use to do this as well. So for this particular situation, I edited this uh, trailer for Indiegogo for a short film project that I'm working on, and the reason I used it is because I really love how easy it is to just drag titles in and make uh, little bits of graphics like this, took me about a minute to do. Would have taken me five, ten minutes in After Effects. And the great thing is I can still edit this. Like, it's just so powerful. Final Cut Pro 10 is so powerful for being able to just drag in these ready-made titles, you know? And some of them are really, really crazy, but some of them are really, really nice, like these ones that I use. Now, th this version um, of the of the title only, ha only had a left lower third, um, but I wanted a right lower third for cases where my subject was on the left of frame, so I just went ahead, opened this in motion, and created a new version, and it was super easy, I just reflected it on the x-axis. So like I said, it's just so easy, like Final Cut just makes it so great to do graphics really quickly. But I've run into a bit of a problem. I've been cutting up these uh, bits of footage, and I'm ending up with some jump cuts, and I'll show you an example here. How you're processing them right now. Uh, Jake's unlikely twist. So things like that. I don't really want that to be in my project. I don't want harsh jump cuts like that. And Premiere Pro CC 2015 has a new plugin called the Morph Cut Transition, which just functions like any other transition, except it uses a bit of maths and it basically creates data between these two frames and, and morphs the two shots together to remove the jump cut. Unfortunately, uh, Final Cut Pro doesn't have that yet. So we're going to need to bring this project in its entirety into Premiere. However, I am going to go into a little bit of advanced stuff about timecode syncing because sometimes you will run into issues and in this case we will be running into some issues. You may not, but we definitely are. So first things first, we're going to jump up to file, we're going to press export XML and we are going to keep it on general and we're going to Make sure it's current version. It doesn't have to be current version, but there's no reason why you would use the legacy version. Uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, takes the current version. Totally fine. So we're going to type in FCPX. And the reason why we're going to do that is just so that we remember where this came from, because we're going to be creating a couple of files, and we just want to make it nice and easy for ourselves. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to export the audio of this file by going to File, uh, Share, Master File, and we're just going to hit Audio Only. Um, and we're just going to do this so that we can sync it up later. So I'm just going to name this with bracket sync and save. It's going to take about three seconds to do and we're all done. And now we have a file to just check our sync later on. Next thing to check is just open up your timeline and just make sure you figure out what this is. So 1080p 30, we've got to remember that that's what this is. Um, and the reason why we're going to have issues later on is because our clips... If we open up in timeline, we can see 2997. So they're in a different frame rate to the okay. timeline. And Premiere Pro, after you've exported it to DaVinci and then into Premiere Pro, it kind of freaks out when there's, there's different time code frame rates coming in and it can get a bit confused. So, but we can fix that and I'll show you how to fix that later. So we're going to open up DaVinci Resolve Lite. You can download DaVinci Resolve 12 Lite from Blackmagic Design's website. And uh, you just pick it up, and I'm just going to type in my password. Take my caps lock off. Whee. Alrighty, and I'm just going to open up this untitled project. Now, you don't actually... We're not going to keep this project. We don't need it for anything. So we will, in the end, we'll delete it. But you can keep it, obviously, if you're stopping here. If you're just trying to get the footage from um, Final Cut into, into uh, DaVinci Resolve, then you only need to do this. So you just click on this FCP XML, press open. 
and it'll bring up this dialog. You just need to make sure it's the same, so 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second. It should be the same as the project settings, unless your project in Final Cut is in a weird frame rate, in which case you're going to need to conform everything to a different frame rate before you can bring it in. But for most people, it should be fine. You press OK. Then it will say 51 of 51 clips were not yet found. Do you want to select another folder to search? You can click yes if you're going to actually use DaVinci Resolve to uh, maybe color grade or uh, something else that you're doing in DaVinci, but we're moving straight onto Premiere, so we can just click no because we don't need any of that data to match up. And it'll say, oh no, I can't find the, the files. And that doesn't matter. Now, we're going to prepare the media. Now, like I said, if you're staying in here, you can save this project, link these media files up, and continue using DaVinci Resolve, but we're preparing it for Premiere Pro, so I'm going to just delete my titles. Now, like I said, you can keep the titles, they have the text in them still, but I don't want them in my Premiere project, and the more things you have in your project, uh, the, the more likely Premiere Pro is to stuff something up and get confused. So I'm going to delete this. I'm also going to uh, tell you now, you will want to remove the fades from your audio if you're keeping audio for Premiere. Now, in most situations, you won't need to. I can't think of situations where you, where you would need to because most people are exporting to Premiere Pro just to fix some things in the video and then you're just going to bring all of that video back into Premiere Pro in the end. But if you do need to keep the audio, so you want to export it to uh, Audition or one of those programs, um, you can just remove the fades now. But make sure you do because what Premiere Pro will do is it will it will take this section where the fade is and it will just delete it from the clip and it will also delete it from the video track. So you have to make sure you remove this because for some reason Premiere Pro gets really confused. I'm going to select all by pressing Command A if you're on a PC see, you can press control A. I'm going to hit clip link, which is going to link everything in the entire timeline together, and then uncheck it to unlink everything. Now, at first, we wouldn't have been able to just select the audio files, but now we can, so I'm going to press delete, and now we have gotten rid of the audio. It is at this point where we have completely prepared this for export, so we're going to press export AAF XML, and we're going to find where we were putting things. So, yep, in here, and we're going to press Resolve, uh, AAF, and we're going to just press Save. Perfect. So it should say that it's exported it, and it's all good. And that's it. That's all we need to do in Resolve. So we can quit straight out of that, and we don't even need to save the file, because we don't ever need to see it again. We're going to press Adobe Premiere Pro, and we're going to open it straight up. So now we're in Premiere Pro, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to press File, we're going to press Import, and we're going to grab our AAF file that we made in Resolve, and we're going to press Import on that. Now I'm just going to quickly uh, talk to you a little bit about timecode and how it works and what it's for and why it can get out of sync. Uh, the first thing I need to do, and the first thing you're going to also need to do, is find the sequence. So it should be this one with this icon, and it's basically your project. So we're going to bring that in. I'm going to clear out this marker because I don't need it. And here we are. This is our project. It's all loaded up. Nice. It's all good. Um, and for most people, this is the end of the road. But for some people, you're going to have some sync issues. And the way to test that sync issue is to make sure you press import here and import your sync audio. You drag that on to the start and then you can press play. Yeah, it's actually really impressive because all of the people working on this film are... Yeah, that is bad. That is some bad sync issue. So what we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to check to make sure that these in points in terms of timecode land is the same as the in points in Final Cut Pro. So today we're just going to pick a clip. All right, so we're just going to pick this clip right here and we're just going to double click it and it's going to open it up in the source monitor here and we're going to zoom out a little bit so we can make sure that we're on this in point. You can click this. Go to in and make sure you're on that in point. And what you want to do is you just want to take note of what this is. So this says 1 minute, 18 seconds, and 24 frames. And then we're going to jump into Final Cut Pro, find that exact same clip. Just here, right click, open in timeline, and it should say that we're at 1, 18, and 24. So that's exactly the same as what's in Premiere Pro. So that is not the problem. So we've made sure that that's correct. Now, if this is wrong for you, what you can do is you can actually just take this number and copy that and click here and paste it in here. And then you just need to move things around the timeline and sync them up with the audio again, and it should be all good uh, make you sh once you make sure that the in-frame is correct on all of your clips. 
But this can be a bit time consuming and most likely it's not your problem, but that is something to check just in case. The big issue that you'll notice is that this frame, whilst the time code value is the same as it is in Final Cut, is a very different frame. So we want to make sure this matches up with this, and that is where the sync issue is lying. So, like I said, this project is in 30 frames per second, but these clips themselves, if I open them up, are in 29.97. Now, Premiere Pro needs these two things to be the same, because we told them they were the same from DaVinci Resolve into Premiere. So, it gets a little bit confused at this stage, so you just need to fix up that discrepancy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Command A, you can press Control A if you're on a PC, and I'm going to hold down the Command or Control key and find the sequence, and I just want to deselect the sequence and the audio, because I don't want to change those. I want to press Modify, Interpret Footage, and it should show, oh look, it's 2997, and we want to click Assume this frame rate, we want to make sure that that's 30, so it's exactly the same as the project and we're going to press OK and that's going to then instantaneously make it exactly the same thing as it is here and you can see they're the same and that's really good because now if we play back any of these particular uh, clips to say the least it's also fun because there's a lot of scope for just it's now all perfectly in sync now that is Awesome, and now you're at the end of the of the line. Um, you're ready to go, ready to send this to After Effects or however you want to proceed. I can start putting my transitions in here, and it's going to be really cool. And I just want to say thank you for watching, and I hope this helped you. Uh, maybe you're having this same problem as I am, and you now know how to fix it. Um, and hopefully you now know how to do this with Premiere and, uh, and DaVinci Resolve. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.